If you were listening to rock music during the 2000s, there is a really good chance, almost 100%, that at some point you listened to Crossfade. The band had a really good run, even breaking some records along the way, and they were very well liked by fans. Around that time, you had bands like Nickelback, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, Korn, all dominating rock radio, which was certainly very relevant at the time. But few bands would have as much of an impressive run as Crossfade would, and unfortunately, they never reached their full potential. The band's last album came out way back in June of 2011, and in the years that would follow, the band would make multiple promises that they were working on new material. Unfortunately, that album never materialized, and the band has since gone dark, providing no updates on the status of the band in either direction. The comments on pretty much all of the band's music videos are loaded with fans inquiring about whether or not this group will release new music. The same goes for their social media accounts. So what happened to a band that has so much potential and seemingly fell off the face of the earth? Today, we're going to take a look at what happened to Crossfade. By the way, if you're new here, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss more deep dives just like this video and breaking news and updates about your favorite musicians. If there's one thing we've learned over the last several years, it's never say never. We've gotten a new album from Tool, new music from System of a Down, Mudvayne announced their reunion, Stained is back together, and yes, Motley Crue ripped up that contract. One thing is for certain, it's definitely lucrative for a band to announce their reunion. Internal differences and disputes are made all the more easier to get over by a hefty guarantee at a music festival. But for some bands, maybe they're just done. Crossfade has released three albums to date, and their last album in 2011, We All Bleed, received positive reviews from critics and fans alike, but admittedly, it didn't perform as well on the charts as their previous two releases. Their self-titled debut peaked at 41 on the US charts. Their 2006 follow-up, titled Falling Away, peaked at 30 in 2006, though We All Bleed peaked at number 100, released in June of 2011. Crossfade would hit a grand slam with the release of their debut single, Cold. The single would be certified as gold, and it would appear that their fame happened overnight. And in some cases that may be true, but for Crossfade, it was a long road to get to this point. The band originally formed in 1993 in Columbia, South Carolina. At first they performed under the name The Nothing, before changing their title to Sugar Daddy Superstar. It would appear the band was heavily influenced by new metal around that time. The first iteration of Crossfade would include Ed Sloan, the band's vocalist, also performing as the lead guitarist. Mitch James would handle bass duties and backing vocals, and Brian Geiger performing the drums. It was around 2000 when the band decided to change their name from the nothing to Sugar Daddy Superstar. They added another vocalist and DJ, Tony Byrodes, to the band. At that time, bands like Linkin Park were having tremendous success with multiple vocalists. So we've previously heard from bands that came up around that time that record labels appeared to be interested in that format. Evanescence frontwoman Amy Lee has spoken at length about how she felt pressured to add a second vocalist to the band. They would later compromise by adding the vocalist only to their single Bring Me To Life and not the rest of the album. It's unclear if Crossfade also felt pressure to add a second vocalist to the band, but it's worth noting that their DJ, Tony Byrodes, was only with the group for a very short time. Some reports have claimed this was due to tension with vocalist Ed Sloan, though the official reason given was for Byrodes to focus on his family. The band toured extensively in support of their self-titled debut album, though with the wind at their backs, the band felt as though they needed to capitalize on their momentum. So around 2006, they began writing the follow-up, 
On August 29, 2006, they released their second album, Falling Away. Unfortunately, this album would fail to perform as well as their debut, which sold over a million albums. Shortly after this album was released, the band made an important hire, enlisting Les Hall to serve as the band's lead guitarist. Les Hall was already an accomplished musician, having performed in Trey Anastasio's solo band, as well as producing artists. It was around this time that vocalist Ed Sloan was also dealing with writer's block, related to the lesser performance of their sophomore release compared to their self-titled debut. In 2008, the band dealt with a major setback, having been dropped from their major label deal with Columbia Records. The band subsequently signed to 11.7 Music, now known as Better Noise Music. On January 2nd, 2009, shortly after signing their new record deal, Crossfade uploaded a demo song called We All Bleed and told fans they would be releasing a new album later that year. Unfortunately, that release never materialized and would ultimately be delayed for two more years. This is around the time where things became chaotic for Crossfade with unreliable updates, release dates getting pushed back, and a general lack of communication with fans. The album never released in 2009. It was later scheduled to be released in October of 2010, but was delayed to January of 2011, then to April, before ultimately releasing in June. Vocalist Ed Sloan attributed the lengthy release process to general writer's block and credited his bandmate and longtime friend Les Hall for helping him with the album. Hall is a veteran producer in his own right, so naturally it made sense for him to serve as the producer of We All Bleed. In one interview to promote their new album, vocalist Ed Sloan talked about hoping to tour for several years in support of the record. I would hope certainly that, um, like the first record, that we will be on the road touring for 16 to 18 months away from Columbia, South Carolina and having a ball with our brothers. Just being out as long as we can. I want as many singles as we can ride on and just uh, seeing all the beautiful, lovely fans out there that we love. Unfortunately, things wouldn't pan out that way. The album received minimal promotion and the band would tour for about a year in support of the record before fading out, leaving fans wondering what was going on. The band would then abruptly go on hiatus, and little to no news has been heard from the group since. Rumors would circulate online about what happened to Crossfade for about four years, until vocalist Ed Sloan made a rare public statement on the band's Facebook page. He shared the following message on March 13, 2016. He wrote, What's up peeps, Ed here. I just wanted to poke my head in here, say hi, and clear some things up for any of you that thought we dropped off the face of it. I know it's been a while and I hope you'll all forgive us for the silence. Yes, we are still together and all very well. And yes, there will be more music. When? Not sure yet. Still at it. Know that you will be the first to hear about it. We love and miss you. Peace, Ed. Roughly one year after posting that message to the band's page, vocalist Ed Sloan would debut a new solo single, surprising fans by announcing that he would be releasing a solo album. He would later release two more singles and produced music videos and lyric videos. The lyrical theme sounded like Christian music, and Ed Sloan appeared to be happier and healthier. He posted an interesting statement on his new website to promote the album. It was titled, The War, The Surrender, and The Return. Ed Sloan has sold over 2 million records, written three number one rock radio singles, and toured the world with his band Crossfade. It later said, Sloan is planning on releasing many more singles as he finishes writing and recording his debut solo record. Some recording is being done in Columbia at Ed's studio, and some at 537 Studios in Atlanta with former bandmate Les Hall. So, roughly one year later, in that statement on his website, Sloan refers to guitarist Les Hall as his former bandmate. So what happened in that one year after Sloan promised fans that new music was on the way? Sloan's Facebook page also lists him as, quote, the former lead singer and guitarist at Crossfade. Though, for some reason, the band never told fans that they broke up, if that is indeed true. The last they heard from the band was that they were working on a new album, with their own vocalists seemingly alluding to the band being done. To make things even more complicated, 
The solo album promised by Sloan back in 2017 has yet to materialize. The album simply stopped being promoted, and we haven't heard anything from Sloan since back in 2018. At this point, based on all available information, it appears that Crossfade merely just decided to call it quits, with little to no fanfare. Though maybe there is some hope. When researching for this video, I looked at Crossfade's official Twitter account, and in May of 2020, they liked this one tweet. A fan wrote, The only thing that could save 2020 is if Crossfade got back together. With it appearing that Crossfade is unceremoniously done for good, maybe the band would consider some one-off festival dates or maybe a farewell tour and give the fans and their music a proper send-off. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us today at Rockfeed, and if you're new here and you'd like more deep dives just like this one, breaking news and updates about your favorite bands, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. You can also check out some of these recommended videos.